You were born in the year of 07. So, yeah, okay. In the year, last year of the commune of Revishal, uh, right before it fell, in the old military hospital on the grounds floor where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You're 44 years old. Huh. Bloating might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You have some hope. So learning la cap for logic raised to four. M minus one difficulty to all physique passives. Well, that's good. That's very good. I like that. We haven't had another thought for a while. Um, we do have two skill points. We'll sit on those for a second. Uh, let's see what else might be around here. There's junk over here. The money, maybe? I wonder if you could survive just by picking stuff off the, uh, off the ground. Like, we got some pretty big money from Joyce. Footprints in the snow, they lead away from the accident. Seems the walker was either very confused or drunk out of his mind. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder which one he was. The boat tucked away underneath the tarpaulin cover. Great news, the boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in supine position. Wait, well, what would I be doing under there? I don't know, sleeping? Like, what do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual cortex to do with it what would you want. Well, great news, I found somewhere new to sleep. Huh? I said great news, I found somewhere to sleep under this boat here. It'll be free. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at the moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. You have a home somewhere. All cops do. When this is done, you can return. Okay, what about this little shack? Classic car. What's this first? Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and a forgotten chair. How far down does this go? This is the place we were before, okay. Kind of creepy. A little creepy. Postcard Coal City 08. A bow knot for drama. Oh, that's sick. That would replace our necktie, Inland Empire. Uh, it said it. The tie wouldn't like that, though. You're sure that wearing this is a statement. You're not sure what kind of statement, though. <laughs> Look at this get up. Holy crap. We're hideous. This postcard depicts a forest of smokestacks releasing fat plumes of smoke into blue cloudless sky. The tinge of age, the color of old teeth. Give it a sickly look. Written on the back is a single sentence repeated twice. I got out. I got out. No addressee. Huh. Full breeze is enough to make the walls creak. See a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. Yes, we do. Dim light. So, anything else? Doesn't appear to be. Weird. You always assume, like, when you find stuff in a game, you're like, well, it's gotta be something. Uh, that I don't think was much of anything, minus the bow tie. I'm okay with that. Ooh, what's this? Oh, wait, we got people out here. I bet these are, like, the drunk buddies that, uh, one of the husbands or whatever. Cinder blocks charred a makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. I want to check something. So that's eight experience. Allez-vous en. It's like go something something. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. We're getting tons of experience over here. Oh, that's all the way around? Okay, let's check these first. Magnesium. Take it. Imagine this is just another bench to sit and rest if we want. Sit on benches after we solve the murder. And revisit the bench if you need to pass time when he's gone. Okay. Abby. Don't call Abigail. Yeah! It wasn't her name, uh... Wasn't the, um... What's her name? Oh, yeah, we have to do this, too, today. 20, after 9 o'clock, we have to go visit the uh, smoker on the balcony. 
Where's the husband thing? Right here. Wasn't her name Abby? Maybe we don't know. I can't remember. Dust-covered linens, dried tulip beds. Oh, pants. Plus one to Kingdom of Conscience. What the hell is Kingdom of Conscience? We don't have any of that. What? Plus one to Kingdom of Conscience. Tailored trousers in light brown. Moderate in every aspect. They're absolutely unremarkable. In other words, perfect. Hmm, these are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose. Moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. I like regular normal things, I guess. Mm, I know you do. These interstellary pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this, that's for sure. You're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal. Even if you didn't want to be. What the frick? Makes no sense. Kingdom of Conscience. So weird. Uh, what do I want to go with? Half light? I guess. White curtains have been drawn shut, no looking in. One kind of winch here. Wedding stone, well worn and covered in rust. Nice. Few new people here to talk to. Construction material, whoever planned this building, planned to build this house, left in a hurry. Okay. Nice find. Also good. If I had to bet, one of these guys is the working woman's husband. Don't call Abigail. <laughs> Don't call Abigail. <laughs> Rumbles an unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes as if in recognition, then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't you call her, you idiot. Don't call Abigail. Uh, who's Abigail? Oh, Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. <laughs> Abigail is his wife or girlfriend. Chances are she's gone. Calling her wouldn't make it any better or worse. You're not going to get anything from this guy. He's too drunk. Uh, why shouldn't I call Abigail? Snorts and beckons you to leave. It was going to like barf on me or something. Let's lean in. His breath smells harsh like a toxic swamp as he whispers to you. Don't call Abigail. Don't call Abigail. Oh, tell me about your friends here. There's a- Don't you fucking call her, hear me, Abigail. See any women around here lately? Abigail, Abigail, where are you? <laughs> uh... Hey, I'm an important official investigation. I demand you answer my questions. There's no use yelling at drunks. He's barely holding it together. Hmm. Who are you? What's your name? His eyes move around. Don't call Abigail. Don't, don't, don't call. Slowly his head nods off to the side and he passes out. <laughs> there was little chance he'd be a reliable witness anyways. Yeah, but maybe he's a missing husband, Kim. God, such a bummer. What about these guys? Hey, tequila. Idiot doom spiral. Hey, tequila. 30-something man clad in two-piece lycra. <laughs> TM. Uh, tracksuit puts down his pilsner and extends his hand in greeting. Good to see ya. How's business? How's the old reality situation yeah. treating ya? Really, really good here so in reality. What's Wait, uh, tequila? That's what. So we probably like partied with these guys when we crashed the car. Yeah, tequila sunset. How are the um, high concept <laughs> reality based adventures oh, proceeding? No. He says it like it's obviously your name, like you would call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the 4th Street Gang. Good, these people know your true name. Looks like it has preceded you, Mr. Sunset. More on that later. <laughs> well, uh, hmm. Uh, not too hot. I'm on a 42 year losing streak. That's hard. I'm not three or maybe four years into mine. Wait, no. Make it five. 
Looks at a shit stained lycra with a grim expression. Things aren't going super well for idiot Doom Spiral either. Haven't found those keys yet. Ever won that great piece of arts back? No word for my business buddies. Business buddies? Yeah, this guy's your buddy buddy. You feel it immediately. You belong to an organization, a fraternity of drunks. Idiot Doom Spiral, huh? This is bound to be good high concept conversation at last. Hey, uh, have you seen a red haired woman named Ruby around here lately? I can't really remember seeing any woman after losing my keys. It's a touchy topic. He hasn't gotten laid in ages. He really has no idea who this Ruby is, sire. What do you guys do around here? We're saving the world. Please, please don't call. Don't call, Abigail. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what I'm doing. Tried to save the world at once a long time ago with enterprise, creativity, willpower, but that didn't work out. So now it's a pirate's life for me. Hey, uh... Oh, do we want to just, like, dick with this letter first? Or maybe we should meet those people and then decide if we forge it. But it looks like we could get these guys to write on it. Uh, what's a tequila sunset? You keep saying it. It's you. <laughs> You're a tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? Nope, you sure don't. Uh, no. Uh-huh. Do you want to know how tequila sunset came to be? Sure do. Tequila, tequila sunset. Something ominous here. Well... Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Let me take a sip to moisten up my cord. Tequila Sunset rolled us Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you, the man, the myth. Wait, did we meet on Friday? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. All right. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hopefully to be the early boot who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept, if you ask me. I feel like we heard that somewhere as well. It is. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Well, what happened now? Or next? It was late Saturday night when we, the Union of Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this. We get our drink on 24-7. Makes every man warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's where reality set in. Yeah, naturally. Anyway, there was a brief silence, a gasp of silence, if you will, followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the top coast at top speed. It sounds like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis, rushed to the jetty, never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. Three men are standing on a wooden platform extending out from the shore of a dilapidated fishing village, their cheeks red, spirits high, beers in hand, eyes glazed over. What we saw is a sight to behold, a beat-up officer carriage containing you right there on the beach. You revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come. So naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come, to which you replied, the time hath come for tequila sunset, the end of all things. Oh, God. Okay, what happened next? Your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty and through the ice. We ran towards the ice while you crawled out your, out your way out miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got back here, they were sitting on the beach crying. You said your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Recognizing our brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole Tequila Sunset thing. You told us it was your name now and insisted that we all call you that from here on out. Oh, wow. Okay, well, uh, my real name is uh, Harry, sir. No, that's just what your mother calls you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Just embrace it, brother. Well, how long do we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revisholian women and how they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked up, got up, and left without saying anything. Wow, that's quite the story. Yeah, I bet Tequila's fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If only you knew. Wow, okay. Uh, okay. Did I tell you anything specific about this person that fucked me? Uh, you were pretty vague about it, but you kept saying you got fucked real hard and that we've been fucked too. Please don't open that door. <laughs> uh, no one's fucked me. I do the fucking round here. That's Rosemary back here, I guess. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. 
Did I mention losing anything else? Besides your gun and your badge, you lost something about hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are hazy, so I mentioned the gun, too. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage, too. That's a big one. Did I say anything about the case I was working? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. That you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. <laughs> a lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. It's not meant as a joke. He's sorry for the hermit cop. Uh, okay. Did you re get a read on what kind of cop I was? Uh, you kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of the hand against your temple saying, Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, well, I don't think I need to hear anymore. You know, it's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. Yeah, you seem like you're characterized by your storytelling ability. Want to tell me another one sometime? Whoop to do, so I'm a fucking storyteller, right? Why not? Better than a beach bum. Yeah, actually, I, I think I've heard enough for now. Thank you. Is what you almost say, but the words choke out in your throat. Do you really want to miss out on this good stuff? Perhaps it's significant. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Stories suck. I don't want to hear them. Uh, no, I wouldn't want that. Not at all. Exactly. So you know what to say. Yeah, you look like someone with a lot of cool stories. Want to tell me how you became the idiot doom spiral? Depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? You might get scammed here. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to cost me a lot. No, the reality of the situation requires a rather modest contribution, a little a motivational package. Uh, what do you need? Booze. Do you forget? Already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier? So, you've got anything for old idiot doom spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. Well, uh, I, I've got some sweet Commodore Red. You can have it. Classy. Before he can start, uh, before he can start, one of the other bums interjects. Hey, Spiral Boy, are you gonna share that? <laughs> Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me too. My actual name is George, but around here, you already know. I was a once reasonably high net worth individual, a founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. I used to. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called the cultural incubator, abstract value generation, value per person, high concept stuff. I developed a paradigm, worked within the paradigm, got the, the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me, so I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. Wait, uh, did the jogging help? It did. With my trusty sensory tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. Still wearing it, I guess. But now dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. What happened? One day I left my uh, evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sounds of keys jangling in your pockets. Shakes the bottle around and makes a ringing sound. He's right, it's incredibly annoying. His eyes are clouded, his delighted blood vessels encircling his irises like stinging brambles. His eyes are your eyes. So I removed the carrying and put their keys from the front gate in the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see. At least that was the plan. It was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet very quickly. Go on. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Let's let him keep going. Reality was rather looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower, but when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard, standing in front of my apartment building, fumbling with my keys. Uh, fumbling with my pockets, I realized I'd also forgot my apartment key. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. Turns his head towards the sky and said, I wish I were, Tequila, I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. All right, so what happened next? I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't answer. Those who did, I assumed I was trying to sell them something, and I hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see. One moment, someone chats you up. Five minutes later, you brought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be one of the best. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But then I reached my office. I remembered that I changed one of my producers to change the locks that day. And uh, since I hired only the best, he'd already done it. I couldn't get in. Anyways, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years. My girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company, well, you see where this is going. Well, you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? 
Like nothing you've ever heard, right? Wait, uh... I mean... <laughs> yeah, I literally can't believe it. Me neither, Tequila. When I lost my keys, I lost more than access to my apartment. I also lost my leverage over humanity. I wasn't a high-concept creative director anymore. I was just some homeless asshole with a premium sensory lycra track suit. Track suit. You can't imagine what it does to a man's confidence. Anyway, that was all the story one ball got you. Almost empty this one. All right, well, you got uh, any more stories? I do, but as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low if you catch my drift. And I don't got any other booze on me right now. Oh, cotton mouth is keeping my tongue imprisoned. All right, well, uh, we'll be seeing you, I guess. You too, Tequila Sunset. Holy smokes. Let's see if this guy Good is like the husband. Friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? Buddy boy? I'm a police officer, not your friend. So what do you want? Oh, I wow. Smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I got Pilsner. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits <laughs> I can let go for 300 real. 300? Also, I have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Uh, why does a bottle of spirits cost 300 real? And see, friend, uh, it's real valuable, worth every real if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Uh huh. You know, it's funny, actually. Oh, boy. He finds it difficult to focus his watery gaze. What is? Uh, what? Keep him talking. Uh, wh what do you mean, what? What did you think was funny earlier? This guy, this guy, he shakes and ready, says and. Oh, this guy, this guy, says and shakes his index finger at you. A conversation might bring a discount, no? Yeah, where'd you get the bottle from? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. Good stuff. I got it from a doctor's office. It's one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. A torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. Is that right? Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. That's a good tip. I should remember it. Well, it really isn't. In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of hell. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not a charity, the real thing. Those assholes. The assholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing, but I came out on top of it all. Okay, how? Uh, the idiots left me alone there. Now I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors used to preserve dead thingies. He gets an excited gleam in his eyes. Swipe three cans from this blue medicinal stuff from the back room through the snakes out and voila. What's left is the beautiful blue stuff. He shakes the bottle. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Wow. Don't over... Don't say it. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, I think it'll prove useful, yes. Three real and it's yours, friend, the deal of a lifetime. I'll take it. Well done, you caught it. <laughs> it's a much more reasonable price there, makes sense now. All right, let's take this. Hands you the bottle. Just make sure to enjoy that one, mate. Uh, we could also get this alcohol smokes. That was a thing we needed to do. We can smoke, and we could buy speed. We already have some, I think. I think we have speed. Yeah, we do, and we have four uses left. Okay, cigarettes, it busts, uh, boosts intellect, but minus health. And here, the liquid has an earthly, unearthly blue tint. We could sell it for more, kind that uh, might or might not, but definitely go glows in the dark. This is 98.7% pure alcohol. Keep it away from an open flame. It's under items, so maybe something we can use for something later? Uh, where are we at for health? I'm gonna have to use my last health charge if I do smoke, but I'll tick off one of these things. Smoke around the balcony, find smokes and smoke them. Here we go. There it is, brave little army in your pocket, the first smoke splatoon. Twenty brave souls stand in salute, ready to step into the fire for you. Uh, I'm gonna have one. You picked the best one. The soldier is fat and succulent. What are you waiting for? Light it up. Get a load of this rock and roll cop here, people. Johnny Thundercop fishes a cheap lighter out of his pants. With a flick of the thumb, here's a there's a fire, a primal satisfaction. Lighter's dark green. Disposable plastic. Safety's off. In your case, the safety's always off. Let's dip the bad boy in the flame and breathe it in. Intellect is raised. 
Let's heal. Thick warm smoke gets sucked down into your lungs. Immediately you feel a warm nostalgia fill your head, body and soul. Nostalgia for yourself. The man that was in your youth. Johnny Thundercup is back and he's chill as balls. <laughs> uh, there's smokes in the bottom right corner. Click to gain plus one intellect skills. Yeah, so this is just something we could do again if we wanted. Uh, it'll tell us here. So 60 minutes of higher intellect, which is kind of nice. Uh, this contains eight bottles. Let's switch this back. And we'll do like the pry bar here. Okay, the downside is we don't have anything to boost our health, which I'm a little bit concerned about. So we're going to have to try to uh, ratify that situation somehow. Is this an opening here or no? A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street. Before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps, just silence. Oh, what did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in the roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenement are under construction in the distance. Uh, who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap, a man bays while radio transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing silk machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on the way home. He brings tons of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. Uh, what about the bus stop? 312D. Young girls used to come here huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them, year, uh, took them to school. It has not run for eight years. These were not enough girls. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. Uh, what about the road? Craters pocketed, pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. Landowners have filled the craters with money. It's a vital artery of flow to trade. There's one bump on the road. A dead log. Dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away. A dead dog? Tragedy came from the wheels of... Oh, no. A tragedy came from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. Cold washes over you. The sound of the distant sea has grown distant. That's enough. Wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom carrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. All right. All right. All right. All right. Bit heavy. I don't know. I don't think the dog was us. At least. Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. 